thank you so much for coming so late on Sunday. That makes me really happy. <laughs> Uh, I think I speak for all of us when I say we're very happy to be here and watch this amazing film. And thank you for sharing it with us. Um, we're going to take questions from the audience in just a few minutes. Um, I want to start with asking you, this is a shift for you. This is your big, your first big Hollywood production. Uh, what has that experience been like for you? Uh, wonderful, but it's not a big Hollywood production. <laughs> <laughs> we're still in the independent cinema. Real, real, but it is really amazing to move. Yeah, I, I did watch it, which is a small film and and a foreign, and uh, and I was in a van and I wasn't able to be with the actors. And it was always like, um, it's different when you work in a, in a conservative culture and then you go um, uh, and you work here. And I was really grateful for the moment just to be engaging with my art and just having fun with the actors. I wasn't really worried if anybody will see my hair or I can jump out of the car. So it is really, I was really grateful for the moment. That's wonderful. And yeah, by the looks of it, I mean, it looks amazing. And I know you got shot on location, which was, I mean, absolutely gorgeous. Um, did you, I mean, did you have something in mind as far as a project about Mary Shelley for a long time? How did you kind of get to choosing this as a subject? Um, they sent me the script and I was really, um, I didn't understand, I was like, do they know I'm from Saudi Arabia? <laughs> and it's like she's an English, English woman and it is a period film. And then when I read it, it was amazing to see like this young person coming to, coming out of age and really uh, discovering her own voice. And I, I, I was a literature major and we did the women's studies, women um, uh, authors and all that, but I never stopped at Mary, with, I studied her. But, uh, she was like other people, but now when I got closer to her life, and um, I was really touched that she created this genre, and it is, she, and um, and she was intellectually dismissed, and uh, and I was sad that it's still a very modern idea. Like women don't get the the credits they deserve, and uh, everybody described the book as masculine, and everything in the book was. Um, very much a result what she went through as a woman, like losing a child and very exhausting relationship with her husband. So I felt just like, I, I have to tell that story. Coming from Saudi Arabia, I know exactly how she felt when nobody just like dismissed her. So I felt like um, that connection. And I, I think for us as women, we really need to celebrate women like her who conquer new, um, genres and are not afraid to be themselves and follow their passion. Yeah, it's definitely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, it's something that struck me when I watched the film earlier today that it, it's a story that happened so long ago and really is so pertinent to this day and age and very frighteningly modern in some ways. Um, but something that really struck me that I didn't know about, because I think we all you know, studied Mary Shelley and Frankenstein to some extent in school, uh, that I didn't know was about her relationship with her sister Claire, how it was really the three of them with Shelley and her and Claire that kind of had this entire experience together. Is that, I mean, what was portrayed on the screen, is that how historically accurate is that to how involved Claire was in this entire experience? Oh yeah, she was very involved. They lived together and they took a trip or around Europe and Percy and yeah, may or may not have a romantic relationship with Claire. But I, I felt it's very important to put that because as they were experimenting with morality of the age and also the scene in the in the church where they are defining like um challenging all the paradigms. And for them to create works and for Percy to be that creative and do that kind of poetry and Mary to come up with with some, such an amazing book, they have to challenge what is right and wrong. And that is why it was for very difficult for us to cast Percy. Um, because it is a problematic, someone who leaves his wife and a younger child or runs with younger women. <laughs> it's kind of like very, <laughs> very unlikable. <laughs> so we wanted someone who can, who, who, who you don't judge as black and white, as much as like um, try to see through his eyes. And Percy and, and Douglas Booth did a great job and just like bringing us in that kind of uncertainty about, so yeah. Maybe we take uh, from the audience. Yes, please, let's open up to the audience right up there in the front. Hi, I wanna first say thank you because when I studied 
English romantic literature in high school at an all girls school, needless to say, we didn't hear much about their lifestyles. So when I get home tonight, I'm going to go over to my bookshelf and pull all those books out and reread them with a whole new view. Um, very different view. Uh, I first saw your work in the room across the hall when you were here with Wajda and had the discussion with Gloria Steinem afterward. And I have to admit, when I heard about this film, I thought, that seems a strange choice, but you've done two beautiful films about young women who have desires beyond what their society thinks is acceptable for them. And now that I've seen it, I see the connection, it's beautiful. And I remember when I saw your first film being so inspired by your stories of having to be in a van and not being able to be with your actors and thinking to myself, wow, as a female filmmaker in America, I suddenly realize how easy I have it relatively. And I wanted to hear more about that transition. How was that transition for you of going from a production where you had to be so hidden and in a way anonymous like Mary Shelley to being ha having more freedom? How was that transition for you and how has it felt? It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Like I, the, It was difficult though. We didn't have a lot of money and we were under a lot of constraints with the schedule and all. And we got money from different places, uh, from Dublin, England, and and Luxembourg, so we had to um, travel around Europe just to to construct the the production. So that was challenging. What it was like, we were in one place and one city, and was almost like documenting the whole place. But there, we we recreated a lot of life and a lot of. Um, so that was challenging in a way. But uh, I had great team, and I, uh, and Paki Smith, who did like the production design, was amazing because we literally filmed all the exterior scenes in Dublin, and then we will take, uh, so Elle will enter um, enter a place in Dublin, and we will take her in a studio in Luxembourg. So that all the scenes and were cut in that way, like divided in that way. So it was difficult to just keep the energy and the coherent look of the film all together was, was a challenge. But yeah, I had really great people to work with. Sarah, right up here. Maybe you could say a little bit about the evolution of the script. Um, you are credited as an additional writer. So I was wondering what, what state it was in when you got it and where it ended up. Yeah, a lot of the additions I did in the last, um, in the last act where she went to publishers because I felt like it's very important when I read her stories, like she was dismissed, nobody wanted to, and they told her, let's Percy have his name on it. It's like, this is not in the script. So we brought that in, and um, and for me, it was very important also to explore the relationship between her and Claire. If you remember the scene on the stairs, and originally I wanted that scene to be on the roof, and they built a roof for me, I was like, amazing. <laughs> and then it rained in Luxembourg in one of those days, rain in Europe is like, ah very lush and it's like and ruined the whole thing and we didn't have we didn't have time and our schedule and i really wanted to show the little girls who have big dreams of going and seeing the world and uh, so they told me we have half an hour half an hour can you take it half an hour it's like i'll take it in half an hour just put the camera and we had we took it all in one take like and bill was coming and all so um, so yeah, I, I, I thought it's like very important to show her struggle intellectually, and that is what I, I think I've done in the last act. Do you have any more questions? Some hands? Yes, right there. Yes, I was wondering how elaborate was the editing process? Because I'm wondering, I mean, it was a beautiful film, and, and there's so many different ways to tell the story. For anyone that couldn't hear the question, the question was, how elaborate was the editing process? What was it like? Yeah, it was very long. We had a really long editing process. And one of the reasons was like we were editing in Dublin and my family was in LA. So I would run to LA every time. It's like, I'm not going to stay in here. I'm done with Dublin. Thank you. But it is, um, and it was a complicated film to edit, really. But um, and because um, we put it together in different ways and we played with it and we add a lot of voiceover like we wanted to hear the voices of the of the um, of the writers like to see what is happening in their uh, in their mind and who they are through their literature um, 
and uh, so yeah it was it was elaborate and i i'm i'm very grateful and what i had only like four weeks to edit or like six weeks maximum i was doing everything very quickly because we had to go and you don't and it is a luxury if you can stay in the editing suite for longer and just explore a lot of options okay we got time for one or two more questions if you have a hand up raise it high yes right in the back what was the most shocking thing you found out about mary shelley the mortality rate, they died really young. <laughs> That's bleak, but true. Yes, it's true. It's funny. And yeah, that for me was like very shocking. Um, yeah. yeah. The fact that we get to the end of the film and you realize she did all of this by the age of 18 also is, <laughs> wow. <laughs> and we've got time for one last question. Yes, right there. Uh, I don't know if I, um, um, I'm, I'm do, I, I just finished a film about an, a set in the African American community and about this uh, woman who learns to love herself and love her hair and enjoy who she is. So that is another film I've done uh, and I'm very grateful to be close to that community and to do film there. And the other film, I'm going back to Saudi and, and making a film about another woman who's uh, taking politics <laughs> in a very segregated society. It is a very absurd situation she finds herself in, but it is very important to encourage women in the conservative places to take offices and to be visible and to run for, to be seen. And still, even if women are allowed to take uh, to run for an office in Saudi Arabia, they, they shy from that because they don't want to be recognized and they want to be in the, still in the shadow. So. I don't know if that maybe doesn't answer your question, but that, that kind of characters that I really want to make films about. People who challenge the situations, women who are very strong and define who they are and the culture does not, or the society does not define who define them. Hell, that's as inspiring as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much for joining us. Everybody, thank you very much for coming out. Have a wonderful evening.